Opel Corsa D 2006-2014 years of release. Good day if you are wondering is it worth buying an Opel Corsa D and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So stories about Royd and Opel are definitely not about Opel Corsa D. Those models that the German company have been producing since the early 2000s in terms of the level of corrosion resistance of the body were in no way inferior to Volkswagen cars which in our country are considered by this parameter almost a standard. Scratches and chips on the body of the Corsa D have not covered with the red coating for several years. There are cases when, during an accident, the paintwork peeled off on a sufficiently large surface of the body, but in this case the metal was in no hurry to rust. By the way, on the Corsa D of the first years of production, body paint could peel off without outside interference. Fortunately, the mechanics quickly adjusted the body painting technology, after which the problem ceased to be relevant. However, according to modern tradition the paintwork is still very thin, so in especially vulnerable places on the edge of the hood fenders and rear arches it works out quickly enough. Often owners have to repaint the trunk lid as well. Moreover, after the 2008 restyling the Corsa D lost its protective plastic moldings on the doors. Perhaps without them the car began to look even more modern, but without minimal protection, the doors quickly become covered with scratches and small dents obtained in parking lots and in tight courtyards. In general, finding a scar-free Corsa D is not easy. The German hatchback is driven primarily by women, for many of whom the Corsa D became their first car in their lives. Hence, small damage to the bumpers when parking and scratched on the curbs, wheel rims and not always timely maintenance. On the other hand, the Corsa D is very well represented in the aftermarket, so with the right patience you can find one that still looks great on the outside. An obvious plus of the Corsa D is its strong windshield, which is in no hurry to rub over and can withstand even strong blows. The front optics on the other hand are overwritten very quickly and need high quality polishing after 4-5 or five years of car operation, if at the same time the owner of Corsa D periodically parked by ear or touch a hype curve with the front bumper, you will have to fork out for the purchase of mounts. From time to time on sale there are copies with advanced AVL optics. It really illuminates the road better than conventional headlights, but it also delivers noticeably more problems. The lens drives fail after a run of 100-120 thousand kilometers, after which there is no longer any question of any intelligent beam of light. In addition, the reflector burns out almost completely in 5-6 years, after which it's impossible to do without serious intervention or replacement of the optics. In a sense, the thought that the competitors of the Corsa D at that time couldn't boast of such an intelligent system at all should help to brighten the situation. A special consideration when buying a used Corsa D is the rear window. In terms of its size, it's smaller than the frontal one, but at the same time it costs significantly more, not least because of the presence of heating threads, which tend to peel off at first and then completely crumble. In theory, when buying you can advise to inspect hidden seams and joints, but hardly anyone will bother with this from Corsa D buyers, so the slight surface corrosion that can form in these hidden areas is unlikely to ever be noticed. As a rule, potential buyers do not pay attention to the condition of the windshield drains. Corsa D owners remember that they quickly become clogged and require periodic cleaning only when the moisture begins to penetrate into the interior. Fortunately, this doesn't happen often. The salon of the Opel Corsa D begins to creak as the mileage increases, but for an initially inexpensive car this is quite forgivable. What cannot be said about the driver's seat, which noticeably sits out already by the run of 100,000 km. The manual transmission selector cover loses its attractive appearance even earlier, to the mark of 60-70 thousand km. Otherwise no complaints. For neat owners, the interior plastic is in no hurry to, to be covered with scratches, and the buttons on the center console doesn't, do not wear out for a long time. It's a pity that after 5-6 years of operation, the backlight diodes begin to give up. Of course, it's highly advisable to change one burned out light bulb, but to the fact that the dashboard to replace the backlight diode someday still have to be disassembled, you should be prepared. The climate system is the weak point of the Opel Corsa D. The fan turned out to be frankly short-lived. Its service life in rare cases exceeds 120-150 thousand kilometers. Moreover, in winter it begins to make noise after a run of 60-70 thousand kilometers. Instances with the more expensive climate control system that the Corsa D got from Fiat is also a hassle. Unpleasant surprises are to be expected from both the control unit and the geared motors. Owners of the Corsa D also collide with flying roads of the drives. 
A lot of claims are made to the air conditioner as well. It's too vibrated, which combined with weak seals leads to gradual leakage. The compressor clutch is also not distinguished by a long service life. The color display of the multimedia system looks great on a small hatchback, but over time it loses some of the pixels. In some cases, soldering the loop helps, in others you have to change the entire block. Another option for solving the problem is buying a refurbished module or completely replacing the head unit with a more modern one. The so-called comfort blocks deserve special attention. Those BCM blocks that were installed before restyling became famous for their unreliability. The worst part is that replacing the block with the first one that comes across will not work. It's necessary to take into account the vehicle configuration and a number of other parameters. Otherwise, after replacing the unit with a new one, you may be left without, for example, a rain sensor or fog lights. As a result, replacing the BCM is not as easy as it might seem at first glance. It's better to entrust it not to garage craftsmen, but to those specialists who know about the features of Opel cars firsthand. The Corsa D's electrical system is generally reliable, although it still has some weak points. The latter includes the generator, which became famous for the serious wear of the slip rings in just 100-120 thousand kilometers. Often the generator bearings begin to make noise by the 50,000 km mark and the freewheel rarely withstands more than 100,000 km. Voltage regulators turned out to be not very durable on the Corsa D. It's quite inexpensive to solve the problem with the regulators, but it often provokes failures in other systems of the car, which in an unfavorable combination of circumstances can result in more expensive repairs. On the earliest examples of the Corsa D, the engine compartment wiring may begin to fail. If you do not monitor the cleanliness of the engine compartment, the wiring inside the corrugation will gradually begin to fray, and the insulation itself of the years under the influence of constant temperature changes becomes quite fragile, which is why it's often damaged even with minimal external influences. Another weakness – Opel Corsa D resistor fan cooling systems. It gradually loses its protective coating which leads to the formation of corrosion. If the coating is not restored, the resistor will soon begin to burn. Better yet, replace the worn-out resistor with a new one. Fortunately, its cost is not great. It's not worth delaying the replacement because in the event of an overload of the cooling system you can expect the appearance of leaks or even ruptures of the hoses. Let it be noticeably less often, but for the same reason the expansion tank may burst. ECUs suffer from constant overheating in German hatchback. As a result, there are more frequent problems with electronics failures, which moreover are not easy to diagnose and malfunctions of the power unit. Most often broken connecting wires are to blame for the failure of the blocks. They are located directly inside the block, which is why the overwhelming majority of owners of Opel Corsa D do not have the opportunity to cope with the trouble on their own. We'll have to go to the specialized workshop whose workers will open the sealed block and solder the thinnest wires to the ceramic board. Of course, nothing prevents you from replacing the released block with a new one, but the problem is that the first block that comes across may not fit. As a result, it will not be possible to do without the help of professionals even in this case. In the Corsa D, oil and antifreeze often end up in candle wells, which leads to contamination of the candles and burned out their tips. Nips are not officially sold separately, but seasoned Corsa D owners are well aware that this is not the case. But to save money when replacing a single ignition module for all cylinders will not work with all the desire. Even for atmospheric engines, the price tag for the ignition module bites, and for a uh, turbocharged engine it becomes prohibitively high. Fortunately, the ignition module doesn't need to be replaced frequently. Much more often you have to change the thermostat, which turned out to be quite weak. On the other hand, thanks to this feature, the operating temperature almost never reaches the calculated one and is almost always at around 85-90 degrees. It's not customary to experiment when developing affordable compact cars, so all the power units of the Opel Corsa D are structurally quite simple. Most of the motors are representatives of the GM family, a distinctive feature of which is the chain drive of the gas distribution mechanism. For four-cylinder power units, the chain can withstand about 200,000 km for engines with three cylinders from 100 to 150,000 km. The most powerful in the Corsa D engine lineup is a 120-horsepower, 1.4-liter supercharged engine. But in the secondary market, it will not be easy to find a copy with such a motor. It began to be installed on the Corsa D only after the second update, which happened in 2011. 
However, for a light Corsa D, an atmospheric 1.4 liter gasoline unit is quite enough, which depending on the presence or absence of a phase shifter develops 90 or 101 horsepower. If you move mainly in urban conditions, then you can even limit yourself to a 1.2 liter engine. As for the liter motor, it's too weak. Accordingly, one cannot count on a large resource of the most modest power unit either. There are no frankly weak points in any engine that was installed on the Opel Corsa D. With timely service the resource of the piston group, regardless of the volume of the engine, ranges from 200 to 300,000 km. Due to the archaic design of the crankcase ventilation system, Corsa D engines tend to fog up with oil, but Opel car owners have long been accustomed to this feature. Moreover, the leaks are so small that they do not require topping up the oil between oil changes. The engine cooling system is extremely rare, but as the mileage increases, it's better to monitor the performance of the electric fans. Every 4-5 years, it's worth replacing with a new expansion tank plug. An important feature, it's worth tightening the plug tightly, but not all the way. Only in this case, the expansion valve will work optimally, which ultimately, under unfavorable circumstances, will be able to protect the entire system from rupture. A supercharged 1.4 liter engine is structurally more complicated than atmospheric units, but despite this, it causes only a little more problems. As a rule, all additional troubles can be attributed to the turbine and intake system. With a supercharged 1.6-liter engine belonging to the GM family one, things are more complicated. The block of not the most modern engine was initially not ready for the power that the engineers managed to achieve with the help of pressurization. This provoked a problem with the lubrication of the liners and the cooling of the four cylinder. In addition, the 1.6 liter supercharged engine proved to be extremely sensitive to overheating. A slight excess of the optimal pr temperature regime is enough for the case to end with the formation of scoring or even breakage of the pistons. Considering that the Corsa D often has to drive through traffic jams where efficient cooling is not necessary, these serious problems can only be considered a matter of time. To some extent, perfectly clean radiators of the cooling system can save you from troubles, but only a few owners of used hatchbacks are ready to bother with their periodic cleaning. On those Opel Corsa D that were brought to our country from the Western European market, you can find diesel power units. Leaving aside the solid mileage of diesel cars, this option is quite possible to look at. The same 1.7 liter diesel engine is deservedly considered one of the best in its class. Of course, when owning a diesel Corsa D, you will have to come to terms with the traditional problems with the EGR system and the specifics of winter operation, but practice shows that in reality, not everything is as bad as it seems. By the way, in the same practical way it was proved that there is no need to fill the Corsa D power units with branded oils recommended by the manufacturer. The composition of the recommended oil is nothing special. Wasting time looking for it is definitely not worth it. Not the most complicated engines of the German hatchback work perfectly on any high quality oil of the required viscosity. The Opel Corsa D manual gearboxes belonging to the notorious F13 and F17 series have enough weak points. All owners without exception are faced with increased wear on the shift mechanism. After 5-6 years of operation, a very noticeable backlash is formed in the shifting mechanism, which makes shifting gears frankly uncomfortable. There is no point in delaying repairs. It is cheap. If you want to save some money, you can buy a mechanism from Deo Nexia, which costs a penny. A typical problem with the mechanics of the Corsa D include oil leaks through the drive oil seals. It's imperative to control the level of the working fluid in the box at least once a year. Every 40-50 thousand kilometers, the oil in the box is worth changing to a new one. It's not worth saving on oil service, since where products tend to accumulate at the very bottom, thereby worsening the operating conditions of the differential. There have been cases where solid particles led to the wedge of the differential, which in turn led to serious damage to the box body. However, even in ideal conditions, the differential is not distinguished by an enviable durability. It's very sensitive to jerking and slipping. If you do not pay attention in time to the noise that the satellite fingers make, they will weld, which will eventually result in critical damage to the box. Differential performance should be checked when buying a used Corsa D. This is not difficult to do. It's enough to lift the car on a lift and then block one of the front wheels. At the same time, the second wheel is spun by the motor, after which the last is muffled. It remains to listen carefully to the sounds that the gearbox emits at the same time. In a similar way, but only with the condition that both front wheels rotate, you can check the bearings of the output shaft. 
If the box begins to vibrate and emit an unpleasant hum, you can be sure that it will need to be replaced soon. However, Corsa D manual gearboxes do not have to work with the most powerful motors, which favorably affects the resource. On most copies, the mechanic regularly serves 150 to 100,000 km. Another thing is that after this run, you may have to seriously fork out. These same manual transmissions are installed on the larger Opel Astra and Vectra models, where they serve even less. Thus, there is still a fairly high demand for contract boxes, which allows sellers to maintain rather high prices. As for the 1.4 and 1.6 liter supercharged engines, the 6-speed mechanics of the M32 series worked in tandem with them. It's characterized by the same breakdowns as for other manual transmissions available for the Corsa D, but they happen less often. Another thing is that the turbocharged versions of the German hatchback often drive aggressively, which in turn helps to reduce the service life. It's worth remembering about the dual mass flywheel. The part is not cheap. Many are afraid of the mechanics hydraulic clutch release, but in fact there are no big problems with it. Often the service life of the release bearing, which is combined with the clutch slave cylinder, is higher than the mechanics itself. As for the clutch, with careful handling it can easily withstand about 100,000 km. There are incomparably more problems with the easy throwing robotic box. To the already existing problems in the mechanical part are added troubles with the control unit and actuators. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.